The beautiful thing about when God sees, God implements plans according to what He sees. In our loss, in our grief, in our sufferings, God sees. And God figures out a way how to bring beauty out of those ashes. He, he figures out a way how to bring life out of that death. He figures out a way to bring something productive out of something that was very unproductive in your life. He figures out a way to take hurts and sorrows and bring something powerful out of it. I was reading a book that a, that a pastor friend of mine gave me this week. and It, it was a book that was dealing with, with grief. And, and uh, I guess he thought that it would be good for me to read it so I could pass it on if I knew anyone else that had read it. Specifically, parents who had lost children at a young age. It was dealing with a collection of people throughout history who had lost children anywhere from at childbirth to being babies uh, to being two, three, four, five years old, even teenagers, and how they responded to that. And I was shocked at some of the people that I found in this book. There were some people that we would all know, like, like Abraham Lincoln, who lost a son at a young age and on top of everything else that was failing in Abraham Lincoln's life. But Abraham Lincoln, just like most in this collection of people, most of these people never aspired to greatness till after they were damaged, till after they were hurt, till after something terrible happened in their life. And instead of them throwing the towel, sticking a gun in their mouth, or going and hiding in a dark corner somewhere, they allowed God to take what He saw and work something good in it. As I read this book, I began to read about a collection of people who were some of the greatest revivalists and reformers in church history. People like Martin Luther, John Calvin, George Whitfield, John Bunyan, the great hymnist Fanny Crosby. All people who were just trucking along in life and they were doing okay, but they suffered Loss that cannot be compared to because there is no loss compared to the loss of a child. How many would agree with that? There is no loss, no grief, no sorrow that can compare to the loss of a child. And most of these people did not find the greatness of God in them until after they suffered loss. And they allowed God to come to them and say, I see you. I see you what has happened in your life. Let me take that hurt. Let me take that grief. Let me take that loss. Let me have that. Let me do something with that. And out of that, they became some of the greatest preachers, some of the greatest evangelists, some of the greatest church reformers. Fanny Crosby, a lot of her hymns just seem okay. So you read the words of some of those hymns and realize it was after the loss of a child that she penned those words. Suddenly the songs become very powerful. I've been listening to the Stephen Curtis Chapman's newest CD. It's been out uh, 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 two or three, four months now. It's his first recording project after uh, losing uh, one of his daughters through such a tragedy. And uh, I can't imagine how anyone speaks about these things and how they ever go and do what they used to do and how they would ever get up on a stage and just act like nothing was going on and sing the same songs, and especially songs like Cinderella, when the song was written for that particular daughter who got killed. How could you ever sing that song again? How could you, how could you ever get up with the same faith that you used to have when in, the, in your carnal mind you know God could have stopped that? Interesting, though, in her last little drawing, if you're familiar with the story and many of you are, her last little refrigerator art piece, she wrote the words, See. See. And Stephen Curtis Chapman and his wife were reading all kinds of things. They knew it was prophetically powerful. but, but and, and so everyone was taking that and going, Well, here's what she meant, and here's what she meant, and here's what she meant. And it was just so, the, the, the field was so full of dust and debris that everyone was trying to filter through it. So what is, it's prophetic. We know that. We can feel there was something powerful about that drawing in the word see. Do they want to, them to see that she's in heaven now? Could that be it? What, what? Or could it be, when all the dust cleared, that it was God just simply saying, I see. I see what just happened to you. I see how it's hurt you. 
And I see how it's crushed your family. I see. This last recording project truly is just a therapy session. I think there's 12 or 13 songs on it. Every single song, the man is dealing with his grief. Every single song, he's trying to find healing. And it's interesting because he sounds just like the psalmist David in his songs. Because they all start out with things like, I don't know what to think anymore. I don't even know how to feel anymore. I don't know what's what anymore. I'm numb. But as he would get deeper into the song, he would begin to say things like, but I know you're still God. And I know you're still on the throne. And I know you see what's going on. And I know you still have plans and you have purposes and you are great and you are worthy to be praised. That's a man who started out where many of us can relate with the sufferings of loss, but we begin to walk into the revelation of see. God sees. God sees. 